Hi, and welcome to this webinar uh, on Chromex. Uh, we're just going to give it a minute, uh, another minute, just to give people a chance to settle down, uh, get their coffee or whatever it is that's stressing them out. So just hang with us for a minute and we will be uh, going forward. Thank you. Okay, let's uh, let's get this party going. Um, <laughs> you are all very welcome to to this webinar. Uh, we're going to talk about Chromex uh, and um, what Chromex is and how it works and, and stuff like that. And uh, the two of us talking today is me, Daniel. Uh, I'm a Google certified trainer and innovator. Uh, and uh, with me, I have Frederick, the very talented and gifted Frederick Hedstrom. <laughs> uh, and you're actually, uh, you're a certified innovator and you yep. are also the, the, the leader of the development of Chromex. Yeah, uh, so yeah. I manage the, <clears throat> the development department at Online Partner, yeah. Yeah, so we're gonna guide you through this and we, we actually do have a, a guest that you're going to meet later on in the in the webinar uh, you'll have to wait a bit for for that guest so uh what can we say about uh chromex uh, this is a a a tool for taking digital assessments uh for for schools using google um, and we've we've been doing this kind of things in sweden for quite a while frederick yeah uh it says 15 years there, and I uh, would say that, yeah, the digitalization process of the Swedish school has been quite slow, but it has come quite far, I would say, compared to many other countries. Uh, it's been a big focus for the Swedish schools, but and now we see that is actually happening worldwide, which is really thrilling because both you and me, when we have worked as teacher, that has been something that we have been really into try to find those digital processes and get everything to work really smooth and reliable, which isn't always hasn't been the case. So no. <laughs> <laughs> it's been it's been a bumpy ride, I would say, the last yeah. 15 years. But on the other hand, we have learned so much on this uh, journey, one could say, and that is what we try to put into Chromex as well, because we know teachers lack the time of putting all new learning new tools and putting all that time into one application. So that is actually a focus and it's from our experiences as working as ICT educators, as teachers and everything. So yeah. yeah. And as a teacher, you definitely don't have time for tools that works now and then. If a, if a tool works now and then, you will absolutely drop it. You won't use it. So we, we try to make uh, Chromex reliable, smooth, and secure. Uh, and keep it accessible to anyone uh, who uses it. Easy to find, easy to use. So uh, one of the ways that we do that, or the primary way that we do that, is uh, Chromex is built upon the Google environment. Um, can you talk about a bit about that, Frederick, and how, how that works? Absolutely. Uh, instead of like creating our own uh, user databases and anything, we try to instead integrate into the what the what the school already has. They probably have a lot of Google accounts. They have Google Groups. They have Google Classroom rosters, and so 
the main thought here is to relieve everybody, especially IT technicians, but also the teachers of all the hassle of having separate accounts. And that is also something that we have experienced during our days as teachers. So we try to make it as easy as possible for everybody. So if there is a Google account in your Google domain, then you can add that account to Chromex. So you don't have to create any accounts. You don't have to do anything else than what you actually do in your own Google domain. And of course, we build everything on Google Cloud Platform. Uh, Google Cloud Platform is a way for us to actually ensure stability, security. It's secure by default and it's easy to scale up. If there is like 10 exams one day and there's 30,000 exam, 30, exams the next day, the teacher or the students, they won't notice. So yeah. the scalability is amazing on the cloud yeah, and, platform. And, and we've seen these, uh, we, we've seen that as a fact throughout the years. Uh, it's been incredible, reliable, I would say. Yeah. Um, so we also have connections to other Google applications. We 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 mentioned YouTube here. You can you can add clips from from YouTube. Uh, it doesn't has to be a, have to be a clip uh, with cats or stuff like that. It can be a very good teacher <laughs> explaining things, and, and there's a lot of good, really good content on YouTube. So we added that as well. Um, and furthermore, we we set the the uh, Chromex to, to work out with, with with Google Classroom, for example. Yeah, and we're going to showcase that a little bit more later on during this webinar. We have done some updates to our. We have like a total Google Classroom integration um, as we see it. We also use as Classroom rosters if you don't want to integrate into Google Classroom, but that is. We know that teachers use Google Classroom all the time, and uh, we want to be able to integrate as much as possible into Classroom. So that is, of course, something we're going to continue to work with. We have a, we have a quite thorough integration right now. But yeah, so that has absolutely been a focus for us. Yeah, and uh, we can't stress this enough. But it, it's, I mean, Chromex is built. We are depending on Google for for uh, Chromex to to function. So this is not a tool that, that claims to be uh, compliant with, with, with the Google um, tools. Our tool needs Google. Yeah, Otherwise, for example, <laughs> yeah, for example, we integrate with, we work with uh, the submissions from the students are of course stored in Google Drive because that is the natural way to store documents in the Google ecosystem. Uh, we integrate with Google Calendar, for example, we integrate with Google Meet, etc. So we try to use those services that teachers use every day, and we try to integrate them as much into Chromex. So as you said, there won't be any Chromex without uh, Google Workspace or Google Apps. Yeah. Um... So this has been a this has been a very special year. I, I think that you all can agree with me on that one. Uh, we, we haven't seen anything like it. I haven't at least. Um, uh, and the, the year has set a mark also on the usage of, of Chromex, I think. Uh, initially, we actually had had a, uh, a bunch of national exams coming in uh, during uh, uh, 2019. And we had like 30% of the Swedish national exams were written in Chromex uh, uh, with the ninth graders. Uh, and that is, uh, we are totally thrilled about that. Uh, and, and foremost, Frederick, that, that shows that this works in large scale, right? Absolutely. And uh, we monitor all the major exams, of course. And we actually had no problems at all during this kind of top of usage which we have seen and we're really thrilled to see it grow even more um, last we checked we have 3600 submissions every day in uh, chromex and uh, actually during 2020 which we where we thought that everybody would stop like make digital exams it actually grew a lot instead so we had a 38% user growth during 2020, which is fantastic, where actually many exams, high stakes exams in many countries were canceled, but 
we saw the usage actually grow that much, which is which is really amazing. I think it is. It is so, and, and uh, as a step, uh, a consequence of this, uh, we also translate Chrome X to to other languages. This by uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely, and uh, that is always something we are focusing on to see that we can meet new markets, and that is what we have seen happening during the pandemic. Now that going from not working that much digitally, well, in Sweden there hasn't been that much change uh, in regards to working digitally. Uh, people just took their computers and went home, but. What is fantastic that we see that this digitalization of the school is actually coming along in several other countries. And uh, in December, we were contacted by a Center for Creative Training, a Bulgarian Google partner, uh, which wanted to see if there was a possibility to actually use Chromex in uh, Bulgaria. Uh, we told them, of course, we don't support it out of the box, but uh, during the Christmas break, uh, with the help from their uh, great people, uh, we actually translated it. Uh, I think it was done in like one week or something. So, and then we started a project there, or Center for Creative Training started a project in Bulgaria where it was a trial period in collaboration with Ministry of Education and trying out to pilot to see how you can work with digital assessment and digital exams in school and we actually never understood how how big this was so but as you can see i'm not really an expert in reading bulgarian news but uh, there has been like tv uh, and radio and newspapers and everywhere and we're so thrilled of this of uh, seeing how they use Chromex in new uh, countries. Yeah, that's very cool. Uh, and we hope to see this uh, development in other countries as well. Um, and we also do have a lot of uh, activity around the world. We mentioned 35 countries plus uh, uh, using Chromex, uh, not the nations, but people from more than 35 different countries. And that, that's just amazing. Okay, so um, let's, um, I think I skipped two slides there. No, I didn't, okay. So, <laughs> sorry. Uh, so let's talk a bit about our homepage and our help desk. Um, and let's start by saying for that, that we aim for, for Chrome X to be so easy to use that teachers won't need uh, a lot of complicated educational uh, stuff, but you can actually, uh, just get a introduction from your ICT leader or something like that and, and get going with it. And we we updated our, our homepage to, to meet that uh, ambition. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. And I think the, the, the scope of Chrome exists that you doesn't have to, we don't, we, of course we want you to contact us, but we want you to be able to solve everything by yourself. And of course, we try to build everything as easy as possible here, but there will be questions. There will be, how does this work? And how does this work? It's a new application, even though we try to build it as simple as possible with as intuitive interface. Uh, we all we, we saw the need to actually level up our help desk a lot. So it was actually you and me, Dana, who did all the work here. And we tried to categorize it uh, in as, as easy way as possible. So we have a help desk, which is divided into teacher and admin there. And on the teacher page, you can see create an exam. What do I need to think about here? What kind of options do I have during the exam? How, what can I do during the exam? How can I see what the students are doing? And of course, post work after the exam as well. So that is how we categorized everything. And yeah. as you can see in the, in the, um, in inside Chromex, there is also a little, little chat bot there, uh, which you can use. So, if you press the help button when you're inside Chromex, you can just search for an article or like anonymous exams, for example, and it will deliver you hopefully the right article there. So there's some kind of AI ML magic there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which, which, we... means, which means that the more you use it and the more you um, click that this was useful, 
the the better the tool gets actually so yeah. so please do that please use it and uh, and we we hope that this is a a useful tool as a teacher you you absolutely you don't want to pick up the phone to call someone to ask you, you just want to get the information so we try to put it out there to be available uh, and easy to find so we hope that meets meets your needs and uh, it's accessible today in Swedish, English, and Spanish. Uh, are there any plans for further languages? Uh, Not home? right now, but of course, if uh, we get a big customer base in a new uh, language region, we would absolutely have that translated as well. Yeah, cool. Uh, so we have a couple of uh, new functions uh, or rather functions that, that we have that we want to highlight uh, uh, so let's just uh, skip ahead and and let's talk about this uh, function this is a a sketch function that is uh, placed within the form module in chrome x uh, and we got a lot of uh, input from from english schools here frederick right yeah, we had a lot of meetings with Lead City College, and this has actually gone into the discussion that you and me had for, I would say, like at least two years. How do you do math exams digitally? And we were so happy to meet the people at Leeds City College that actually have thought the same thing here, and they actually did some action research here on uh, their students. And they actually guided us through what they saw the future of doing math digitally was because it has been a long time where we had like devices that didn't have touch inputs, especially Chromebooks. Of course, those schools that have gone with iPads always had it, but the touch input on the Chromebook has, hasn't been that uh, big, I suppose. But I, we also see that at most Chromebooks today, I think, or many of them at least, sell with touch input and the discussion we had with them that they said that well it's hard to engage the student in doing math digitally so could you do it just like a simple way like this and uh, we need like a sketch module we need to be able to add pictures to that module and the students could write just with a pen there so that was like the why we built this and the first thoughts about building this and that is actually everything is about reducing complexity here to actually help the students in an easy way to do maths did digitally yeah and this is just the first iteration of this feature so we will add more functionality later on yeah uh, we, we're very happy about this function. And when it comes to Chromebooks uh, with touch, I, I would say that that is skyrocketing right now. Uh, uh, schools do and districts do buy them. So it, is it, I think this is a good timing for us to put this function out. Uh, and this is a function that the teacher adds from when creating the, the exam um, uh, or the assessment. Uh, you add the the form function and you click the the cogwheel in the upper right corner and choose show um, show one question at a time. That that's the, also one of the functions that we added because if you go to Google Form, you you get all the questions in one sweep, right? Yeah. And and I wouldn't say like of course we 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 get inspired by Google. And that's why we built the four module the way we built it. Uh, mm. But now we feel like after the discussion we had with a lot of customers, it's, well, if you add like 20, 30 questions to a form, and it could be quite distracting to see them all at the same time. So here we actually, we added that feature. So you, there is a lot of other functionality we think coming with this, but today you can, for example, bookmark a question. Usually if you do it analogy, you may put a mark on that question and say, I will go back to that later. Uh, but instead here, you can put a digital bookmark on a question. And so you don't have to remember what question you should go back to and do more and put more effort in. So that is also a feature we added there. Uh, 
we're also discussing adding more like a feedback feature to this as well, uh, where the students can actually tag a question as difficult when you do like mock exams. So you can tag that question uh, so the teacher know that, okay, this uh, this area was actually tagged by many many uh, students, and we need to we need to re repeat this area again for everybody. So yeah. that is something we're also going to add in the future here. It is uh, so. This is just the the when it comes to the the sketching function. This is just the beginning of it, um, but it's it's out there. We hope you like it and uh, give us some feedback on that also. So we've also added, uh, when it comes to accessibility, the, uh, a function for, for setting the background colors in the, the student's writing area. Yeah. And this was actually something new for us as well. And this has been in dialogue with uh, several uh, English colleges that they, you actually do an analysis for the students which have like, problems uh, it could be dyslexia or other kind of uh, disabilities that makes them having a little bit hard to uh, how hard to read so you do an analysis and the teacher can actually set the background of the exam for that student and uh, so this is a totally new feature and we haven't had that feature request in sweden for several years no. so yeah. But but now when we speak to actually to some Swedish teachers as well, they say that this could be really good for those who have like different kind of uh, problem reading as well. Yeah. So it's out there and for you to use. Uh, okay. So another function when it comes to accessibility, uh, obviously we we wanted to make take a uh, some some function for for uh, uh, students with dyslexia yeah so this is actually from the collaboration we had with our bulgarian partner as well and they they just uh, sent an id to us like we have this uh, friend of ours who have developed uh, a dyslexia font uh, which actually works in acrylic letters as well so and we thought yeah that has been a really cool feature. So this is actually something that the students can choose by themselves. Uh, so we added uh, we added Lexen, we added Open Dyslexic, and we also added uh, Addis font to this to actually create more accessibility for students. And today we actually have a guest here, as uh, Daniel mentioned, and. Uh, that is Christina, and she will uh, be able to speak a little bit about her work, uh, which she has done. So welcome, uh, Christina. Hi, everyone. Uh, first thing I have to say about myself that I am a dyslexic too. So for me, uh, I'm well known with the dyslexic difficulties, uh, with uh, um, hard to, to read aloud and uh, all these things, um, no matter that, I finish high school and uh, bachelor degree uh, without any problems. And uh, then as my master's program, um, I came to idea to, to create a special font, uh, which should be um, easy to use in a wide range of places. For example, books, textbooks, uh, websites, uh, Educate, educational resources and so on. Uh, for the main I, main idea of, uh, of Addis was to help people with the middle to um, to short like um, um, wall wall level of dyslexia to a middle level of dyslexia but not to be disturbing in any way people who have no um, read, reading difficulties. So I have to create a font with a lot of unique signs uh, because typically creating a font means that a lot of letters could be uh, like really alike to each other and I can really show it uh, Last example, this is uh, D and B, and yeah, this is B and D. And in many other fonts, they are just the same. If you put them like this, they are just almost the same two symbols. 
So uh, my one of main idea was to make them totally different. And this is B and add this and this is one second. This is yes, this is B and D and they are a bit different to each other. These are so little. Can I see it? This is little things that I've done, but in uh, this case, um, Addis is becoming much uh, better for reachability. And uh, also some other things that I made uh, was for um, highlighting the as centers and the descenders. The, these are the as centers and this is Q, the, the as the center of Q, the descender of Q, the this layout of Q. This is, uh, excuse me, this is P. So uh -huh. some little, um, some little design uh, designs elements that I've changed, uh, but they make, uh, they've made Aris much more um, easy to read for people with dyslexia. And um, some of uh, the aims I wanted to solve was the difficult to following the beginning and the ending of the sentence while reading aloud, uh, the following the line in uh, the paragraph, and uh, also to maintain the, the beginning of uh, the sentence, then the, the, the second part of the sentence, and to follow the all of the story that paragraph keeps. Also, there are some changes in the numbers and the additional signs in font. Also, the special settings I add to um, line spacing and uh, letter spacing between um, letters in the words and uh, between, uh, between two or three words in the sentence, which make it easier to read, but without uh, uh, make it harder or anything stranger to people who don't have any difficulties of reading. Thank you so much. It's really interesting to hear the story behind the font. You never really think that there is so much thought going into it. And it's really interesting to see you compare those two letters. And for me, I have never thought about it, but of course that could easily be mixed up. So uh, we are actually really thrilled to add this and uh, we want to say thanks to you to actually, it was actually your uh, your friend who gave us the idea to contact you and that actually inspired us to add this. And we think it's a super, super great accessibility because we want to even out taking exams for everyone because this actually affects people's life a lot. So whatever we can do to help uh, help students to progress uh, doing their exams, it's fantastic. So I want to thank you a lot for uh, being here today, uh, Christina with us and uh, explaining the background of the font. Thank you. I think it's Thank really you, Christina. Great. Uh, yeah. So we're really happy that we got in contact with Christina and could add her font to our tool. And, and this is a necessity for, for students who have the need, obviously. Uh, so we're, we're happy to, to give you, the students an option to choose between three different uh, fonts. And uh, obviously, uh, Christina's font is also available for Bulgarian Bulgarian students uh, in Cairo. Yeah, it's acrylic letters. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's super uh, good. So we have, let's move on. Uh, uh, we have a classroom extension as well uh, that we want to just show. I'm, I'm going to, we just made a movie of this. And so yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kick it off and Frederick, you can just Tell me yeah, I can try to about. try to yeah yeah <laughs> start it off yeah yeah so we have a Google Classroom integration as I told in the beginning here it's just a Chrome extension that you can install you can install it as an administrator or however you wish wish and to start the integration with the Chrome X if you pause there Daniel I'm trying yeah yeah so 
we have two different ways of working with Google Classroom in uh, Chrome X. So this is the fully integrated way of working with Chrome X. So if you just want to add the roster from a classroom, you can do that when you create a regular exam and just add student. But in this way, we integrate totally with the Google Classroom flow as, as is shown in the video. So you press the button from Classroom and you get sent to Chrome X. And yeah. And you choose what classroom you want to connect with. You set a name for that one. And you just set up it like a regular exam in Chrome X here. And you get, uh, when the exam is created, yeah, there it is. So you get a little symbol up there to the right that shows that this, this exam is connected to Google Classroom. And it creates an, an assignment in Google Classroom as well. You can go into that and edit it. And uh, you can use a rubric, for example, if you pause there as well, Daniel. Yeah. And it also, uh, one of the news, we actually got this from a Bulgarian teacher as well. Why don't you just write out how they should start the exam in the assignment as well? So yeah, we added that as well. Great feedback from a teacher. So in the assignment in Google Classroom, it says how to open Chrome X. So yeah, continue. And here is the student work. And as you can see, these are the students in the Google Classroom. And the same students are as well added here into Chrome X for the exam here. So I cheated a little and created uh, created uh, modules here for the exam. I created one for module and one writing space module here um, for the exam. And you can also add teachers there, more teachers uh, if you wish to the exam. And as you can see here, it's assigned to five people. Those are the five students in the Google Classroom, but no one has signed in. So here is the first student signing in doing the exam as a regular Chromex exam here. So you can use the whole safe model of writing exams in Chromex. And when the students now submit their exam, uh, usually it's just stored in Google Drive. So you can see in Chrome X here that the exam is submitted. But what happens now with the classroom integration, it's actually submitted into Google Classroom as well. So now you can see one exam is handed in, which has been written in Chrome X there. And you can go and do all the post work, which you usually do in Google Classroom. And here are the two different exam modules that were integrated here into the exam. You have the writing space here, and you have the form module here and all the answers there. And then you can use a rubric or you can set points and whatever you wish to use. And yeah, so everything works seamlessly between Google Classroom and uh, Chrome X there. So you just create by pressing the button in uh, Google Classroom, you get sent to Chrome X, create your exams there, and then you go and the students do their exams and every, everything is visual in uh, Google Classroom afterwards. So you don't have to actually go back into Chrome X or go into Google Drive. So you can use the regular classroom flow there. Mm. So this is this is uh, really useful, especially for teachers who use Cl Google Classroom to a great extension, and that's the the tool that they're used to to use with the students. So this comes in really handy for those. Yeah, and when you want to set scores in Google Classroom and you want to connect them to an exam, you can use this the whole way. Uh, but you still have this secure secure mode of writing the exams, and you can use all the functionality in Chrome X, like text to speech, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, all the accessibility options there as well. Yeah, thank you, Frederick. That was great. So uh, uh, totally new, I would say. Uh, it actually so new that it's it's actually really not available yet. But it no. will be in a week or two, right? Yeah, uh, this is actually not the the ready release. Uh, it's it's gonna look 
something like that. I, it would probably be some minor changes, I guess. So the background here is that during the pandemic, we have gotten in contact with a lot of schools that we never had in contact with before, for example, from India and other countries. And they were saying like, yeah, we work digitally, but the student doesn't have their own device everywhere. They use their phone, they bring their own device. And well, we already have an iOS app, but going out in the world and leaving Sweden, we see that, well, most people actually don't use iPhone. They actually use an Android phone. So that was the, that was the background on why we started to create this Android app instead. And yeah, I would say that we're like one, two weeks from a release from it. And the student can just download it from Google Play Store and you can choose like the Android client from the Chrome X app instead of uh, like uh, kiosk mode on Chromebooks or anything. Yeah. So I think it's a good uh, addendum to what you actually already can do in Chrome X now. It is, it is indeed. So with that, we're actually covering uh, basically any platform that is used around the world, I would say. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think we do. So we have, uh, just to be clear, clear, clear about that, we have uh, coverage for, for PC, for Mac, for Chromebooks, for uh, iOS, and now for Android. So that, that basically covers everything, I would say. Yeah, <laughs> maybe there are, maybe Linux. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we need uh, <laughs> Linux. Uh, okay. True. True. <laughs> Uh, okay, so let's talk a bit about uh, topics, Frederick. Uh, this is yeah. We actually stole this function from from Google Classroom. We were inspired. Yeah, uh, that's very, <laughs> very phrasing. Yeah. No, but, yeah, but the 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 what we wanted to create was uh, a way just for the teachers to be able to organize their their uh, tests, exams, uh, assessments, whatever they use Chrome X for, and, and just have some sort of sorting uh, so it basically does the same thing as topics in in classroom does right yeah yeah we actually as you said were inspired by it maybe not almost copied it but we think that google did it in a good way and we want to we want the teachers to feel at home so why not add the same functionality here we thought yeah but we also wanted to add it just another layer uh, and yeah this is this is something we call tags. Uh, so what you can do with tags is as a teacher, you can create just any, any kind of tags you want to use. And um, in, this, in this case, I added the not graded tag. So if I have an exam, I can just tag with not graded, which gives me the option to filter that out. I can filter out what exams, what essays or whatever uh, are not graded and just just get them on the screen. Yeah, it's like a really like more dynamic way of uh, using like the sorting function here in Chrome X. Uh, we thought that topics was great, but we wanted more. Yeah. <laughs> and we wanted something that be more a little bit dynamic. So you can like, you can put one, one topic on an exam, but you can put as many tags as you wish on an exam. So it's just another layer of organizing all your exams in Chrome X. Yeah. Uh, just a quick view through a, a couple of uh, functions that we have just to, just to highlight them. We have a function to download uh, a merged PDF of the, the, uh, the essays or the assignments or the exams, whatever it is, just to get it merged as a PDF just for printing out. Um, so this is available within the, in the, uh, uh, the test you can find it in the upper right corner uh, with the three dots. Uh, just click to download it and you will have the merged PDF. Yeah, this is actually something that happened when Google deprecated the Google Cloud Print, which was supported earlier in Chrome X. But uh, yeah, as it was deprecated, it was hard to like bulk print exams for those who wanted to store them uh, in an analog way and not digitally, or maybe assess them analog, I don't know. But uh, you just uh, download a merge PDF and you choose what modules you want to merge there. And uh, you get a PDF which you can print with all the students in one PDF. So it's actually a quite simple functionality, but I think it could help a lot. Uh, it's, it's quite tedious to actually go into Google Drive and print every student submission there. Yes. So 
this is also something that we want to do to help teachers be more efficient working with application. Indeed. Uh, and we added a share submission with student uh, with with same thought basically. Uh, so if you don't use the the classroom integration, if you only use Chrome X, uh, you can use this function just to to share the Google document back to the student, and you can choose uh, what access level the student uh, is supposed to have. So this is not our own sharing function. It's it's actually Google's that we're uh, using, uh, but we we, cho we choose to put it in in Chrome X. Yeah, so it's it's actually the same formative. We try to a little bit mimic the formative process as uh, Google Classroom, but if you don't want to connect it to Google Classroom and you just want to do an exam here, you can share it back inside Chrome X without having the Classroom process there. So it's yeah. it's a bit the same functionality here as uh, in Google Classroom without using Google Classroom. Yeah. And we have also a, uh, an export uh, function. If you want to export any submissions, uh, we're talking about the forms or gap texts. Uh, so how does this work, Frederick? Well, it's quite simple. Uh, every form or gap text you create in Chromex will be able to export. And uh, what happens is that you get a Google Sheet in the same folder as the exam. We create a new folder, which, which is called Exports. And inside that, all you can export those modules you wish to export. And you get all the students in one Google Sheet and all their answers in one Google Sheet. So easier for like those short questions you want to assess, et cetera. So, and you get a better view of all the students, how they uh, answered on the questions. Yeah, so it's it, also so, also something to make it easier for the teachers. Yeah, perfect for grading and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, and the countdown function, uh, this is actually inspired uh, uh, in talks with, with schools in, in England. Uh, so the teacher sets the the time frame for the for the exam. So the exam start time and the end time is the frame where the student can reach the uh, uh, the exam. Uh, but we can set a time limit. So even if you you hand the exam out available for a week, you can say, okay, you got the week. You, when, once you start writing, you have an hour, right? Yeah. So this, the use case here was an uh, entrance exam in England, actually, where they wanted to be able to start the exam at 8 in the morning and uh, finish the exam at 5 in the evening. So, But the students should only have like 60 minutes to finish the exam, or I don't remember exactly the time. Uh, you, can also, you can also pause the exam during this time if you have to go to the toilet, etc. So instead of getting the clock in a Chromex exam, which you get up in the right, you get a countdown timer of how much time is left there actually. Yep, quite straightforward. And the de-anonymization list. Uh, so if you choose to an anonymize the students, uh, once you click the button for de-anonymization in, in Chromex, you will automatic, automatically get a, a, uh, a sheet in, yeah, like a key right. to uh, key to comparing what anonymized ID did the students have and what name do they have and what the email they had. So it's 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 a list of all the students and their anonymized ID to easier identify which student was which. It's because you may have printed all the students uh, anonymously, and then you can easily see uh, which students were which in the anonymize the before you de-anonymize them. Yeah. So it's your way to make it easier as well. Yeah. And so uh, we just went through a a couple of the functions that, that Chromex has. Uh, there's there's a bunch of others, but we want to highlight highlight these ones. Uh, but obviously we're still uh, developing Chromex and we'll continue to do that. So could you just just take a minute to talk us through the upcoming up, uh, updates. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, what we are working on now is an upgrade to the Safe Exam Browser. Uh, 
the safe exam browser version we have now is uh, like the old flow of the old safe exam browser and was quite restrict restricted for us so we are actually rebuilding the whole flow and uh, adding like dynamic configurations to safe exam browser um, which makes it which gives us more opportunity to actually add more resources to the safe exam browser uh, exam client so you will be able to add whitelisted web pages for example it will be a much easier flow for the students signing in uh, with safe exam browser and hopefully we can add a google meet to safe exam browser as well uh, they have an experimental web rtc functionality there and we're gonna try it out and see how well it works but Hopefully, that will also be compatible to use on Windows and Mac as well. We don't know how, how, how long this distance learning will continue, if we will come back. But anyhow, we, we, we will try to add that feature as well, which is now only supported in, uh, on Chromebooks. Uh, yeah. So that is what we are focusing on now. And uh, as we discussed earlier, we have just released a sketch module, which we call it. And we want to have all the feedback we can get here uh, on maybe line tools, adding more symbols like arc and uh, squares, rectangles, you name it. Do you want more colors or... So we want to have all the feedback we can get on uh, the sketch module when we add new features to it. So this was just the first release of the sketch module and there will be several iterations of that one. Yeah, and, and we will we will actually send out a form to you guys uh, after the webinar. So so please take a minute or two and just, just think it through what do you wanna see in this uh, sketch uh, functionality? Uh, please go ahead. <laughs> yeah, and after that, a long-awaited uh, feature auto grading will also be worked on. So, if we see the timeline here, Safe Exam Browser will be done before first of June, and after that, auto grading is the part that is in pipeline here. So, auto grading is actually what we're going to focus on after June here. So, you can expect that to be a feature soon in Chromex and the Sketch module. Yeah, we will develop that. That is not such a big feature to add these extra small features to that module but uh, i would say the safe exam browser and the order grading are the most feature resource heavy features we're going to add now to chromex yeah and of um, course much more yeah there's so much more coming up and and we 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 need the feedback from the the teachers using it uh, or from the students uh, let's not forget the students uh, we really want to have your feedback, and there's a function for that inside Chromex, uh, not for students, but for teachers. But teachers, you're more than welcome to collect uh, input from students as well. We, we would love to get that. So yeah, and that's actually how Chromex has been developed all along. It's been right. in, in collaboration with municipalities, and it's really user-driven development. So all the feedback we get in we sit uh, and have our meetings and we plan for the next uh, next development sprints and we actually go through our whole feedback portal and see yeah this seems like a feature that the teachers really really want so if you are active there and you can vote on features for example that will be prioritized in the future yeah excellent so we just want to and give you guys a chance to uh, ask questions and you have the the comment fields uh, on youtube so please uh, if you have any questions put them in there and we'll try to answer them uh, if we can i'm just gonna swipe through there's a lot of hellos uh, and yeah. i see that we already got a feature request here from uh, jonathan davis yeah, more colors. Yeah, and yeah. we, I mean, that's that's pretty. That's the first thing that we said. Okay, we need to yeah. add more colors. Uh, and with the example that we had with the with the triangle and rectangle on the yeah. photo, it, it needs to be put yellow or red or something just yeah. to stand out. And that is actually the easiest feature of all to just add. So yeah. that is that is the least of the problems of the features <laughs> yeah, that. That is the least work to add. So uh, of course that could be that should be added. Yeah. 
So uh, no, I think uh, it seems that you all guys are are happy with the presentation. And obviously, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to to send them to us to our support or or uh, uh, to anyone in our organization. So please do that. Um, yeah. Well, I think I would say with that we're quite done, Frederick, aren't we? Yeah, I would say that too. And thank you everybody for watching and uh, those who are watching live and those who are watching afterwards. It's great. And uh, as Daniel said, we love all the feedback we can get. Uh, sometimes you're angry about something, you send me, send us an email and we'll probably fix it for you. Yeah. Hopefully. It's okay to be angry. We, we, yeah. we can handle that. <laughs> All feedback is welcome, what I'm trying to say. It is. Yeah. It is, indeed. And it makes the product so much better. Yeah. Okay, so thank you so much for, for spending uh, almost an hour with us. Uh, I hope this gave you some input that you needed. Um, uh, and we will we hope to see you quite soon. Uh, I, we're planning to have more webinars like this. And, uh, if you have feedback on the webinar as well, you please send, send them to us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care. See you later. Bye. Bye.